Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Adaraiju Plays Deadly Creatures. This is a relatively unusual game that I believe was released in 2007, or was it 2009, for the Nintendo Wii. It's uh, pretty much living proof that the Wii did not have a completely unoriginal uh, group of games. A lot of people said that the biggest criticism of the Wii was the fact that it didn't have too many third-party games that... Uh, didn't rely on Nintendo's rather immense library of, well, for original characters and games. But this is a very different game. So, I'll let uh, Billy Bob Thornton uh, explain. Greed can poison a man's soul. Turn him into something he ain't. Make him deadly. Even more deadly than the vermin that run underfoot out here. I wouldn't say I got my revenge didn't have much part in that. But when that old gas station seen us last day, well, that was a good thing. Faulty gas lines weren't what blew up George Strugs, no matter what the news said. The cops found a stash of gold coins with Spanish writing on them. Now, I'm not one to go believing in cursed treasure. I think it was just my bad choices and bad instincts that got me this time. Same as always. And George Struggs, the cops asked him what happened right before he slipped into that coma. And he kept mumbling something about deadly creatures. Well, the deadliest creature in this whole goddamn desert is that bastard George Struggs. He can rot in that hospital for all I care. You got what's coming to him. Deadly Creatures is a rather unusual game in that the protagonists... Well, let's just say that while Billy Bob Thornton and Dennis Hopper are the two voice actors for two of the characters in this game, they are not the title, the uh, protagonists or the playable characters. The two playable characters are actually a scorpion and a tarantula, both of whom have somewhat different gameplay. They alternate between levels, and there's the scorpion right now, and the scorpion has more of a straight-ahead beat-em-up... Uh, action-adventure explorer-type gameplay, while the tarantula, yes, this is the same tarantula, has more what's termed survival horror, and a little bit more focus on exploration, and trying to, and you can usually get away with foes much more often than you can. I want to loosen my drawers or something. Start here? No, no, I'm just getting my bearings. It's over this way. Who are we digging up, anyway? Who are we digging up, he says? Well, Mr. Tarantula here is now safely in her burrow, his burrow, her burrow, whatever, and we're gonna take a look around it. Aha! Crickets! Crickets are your regular health power-ups. You grab onto them and they'll restore your health. Later on in the game they'll get a lot more active and a lot harder to grab, so uh, actually getting them is kind of a pain, but whatever works. Press down the control pad to reset the camera behind you. Okay then. As a tarantula and the scorpion, you will be heading around in the midst of the Sonoran Desert, and uh, in the background will be a couple of humans who are up to something, but we don't find out exactly what they're up to until later on in the game, <clears throat> as your story starts to interact with theirs. Grubs can be fitted throughout the world. You can approach a grub, and you grab it, and you regenerate a small amount of health. But unlike the crickets, grubs don't regenerate after you eat one if you enter a new level. Collect enough grubs, and you will be able to unlock some concept art for the game. Collect all them, and you'll unlock everything. And here's our first enemy of the game, a warrior beetle. Now it's time for our first real fight. This game gets right to the point. Combat strikes. Unfortunately, you can't impale the beetle on the cactus needles like that guy did. Worth a shot, though. But you can't do it. Jump. Press the Z button to jump over obstacles. Not into obstacles, thank you very much. Ooga booga boo! There's another grub. Another grub. Grubs are easy to find right now, but later on you'll encounter some that you really have to go out of your way to get. But... That's up to you. Like the game said, just said, you can't climb past a big crack in the wall, and that's the game's way of uh, ensuring that you only go certain areas. Wacko! 
Cracko. Smeko and Cracko. The more, uh, uh, come on. The red beetles are the warrior beetles, but you encounter beetles of different colors and different, well, slightly different sizes and different abilities as you go further along. These lightning bugs are your save progress things. They'll allow you to, well, save your progress whenever you come across them. What's down here? Hello! Another threat. Wolf spiders. These tend to show up in large numbers, but they are not really that dangerous, at least not compared to some of the later foes you'll get in the game. They are certainly less dangerous, they are certainly more dangerous than, say, the beetles, and they are more likely, they are also faster. On the harder difficulties, where I'm playing on the easy difficulty right now for the A's of a simpler gameplay, but on the harder difficulties, they'll jump all over the place and try and evade all your attacks, and they'll do a darn good job at jumping you and hitting you while you're off balance. Aha! Hello, Cricket. I want to eat you. Uh-oh, and he wants to eat me! The food chain doesn't stop at me, of course. There's plenty of bigger and badder things in this desert, and this rattlesnake is one of them. This is our first boss fight in the game. There actually aren't too many boss fights in the game, but ouch! Rattlesnake, by the way, will do more damage depending on what difficulty setting it is, and it'll attack more quickly and aggressively. What you're supposed to do right here is to move back and forth and simply not be there anymore when it attacks you, and when it hangs its rattle down like that, attack it, and next, what happens is a... Gotcha. What happens next is a Z-button prompt thing, a quick time event. And depending on which way you shake the Wii mode or which button you press, you can either dodge the snake, or, uh, if you screw up, the snake will attack you. Ouch. I'm just sort of lucky that I'm playing on the easy difficulty, because the snake attacks fast. Attack number two complete. Booga booga boo. Bye. I think a tarantula would be uh, no match for a snake. And under normal circumstances, it wouldn't be, but this tarantula, well, you'll see later on that it doesn't have all the same abilities and powers of a normal tarantula. A normal tarantula simply doesn't use webbing except to line its burrow, but we'll get to exactly what this tarantula uses webbing for later on. Right now, all we really have is attacks involving our front legs and our fangs, and the ability to walk on walls. That's always helpful. I'm not doing well. This rattlesnake is supposed to be probably the easiest boss in the game, and I'm not doing well against it. Oh, I think he's really not happy with us right now. Although I'm a little surprised as to why we're attacking the rattle. I mean, granted, it's the only place we can really reach at the moment, but the rattlesnake's rattle is also uh, just made up of dead skin, largely. Goodbye! Sh shit. Hey, that I pray. Well, not worth it. Bye bye. So the rattlesnake himself is, uh, gone. Do, 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 do. There's another un little annoying thing. Every so often you'll run into these loading screens, and while they seldom take more than a few seconds, I mean, it's certainly not Sonic 06 levels of obnoxiously long loading times, but, uh, they are there, and they are kind of annoying sometimes. Predator goals, uh, for every enemy creature you kill, you get a certain number of points. The more points you get, the more things you unlock. But the thing is, the game often maneuvers you into uh, collecting these points no matter what you do. So it's sort of pointless whoa, whoa, to get the points, if you know what I mean. Come on, let's go. If you could hear that, that's uh, Billy Bob Thornton and Dennis Hopper's character noticing that there's a crashed dirt bike in the desert. Billy Bob Thornton's character is wondering if they should go out and help them, and uh, Dennis Hopper points out that they have no idea where the guy is, and, oh yes, bugs will often team up to attack you, even things like, the wolf spider and the beetle should be going after each other before attacking me, but unfortunately everything is trying to kill you in particular, and it's sort of debatable why, but... <clears throat> Anyways. Ooga booga boo. 
And no, you'll never come across something like a beetle or a uh, tr spider that's not out for blood. These are scarab beetles, the yellow ones. <clears throat> come on, you. What they have is an added ability. What they can do is they can bury their heads in the sand and uh, present their abdomen to you, and that abdomen is tough and armored. And if you attack the abdomen with a light attack, it'll just bounce right off and leave you open. A spin attack is the first attack you get that allows you to break right through enemy blocking weapons. But that dirt bike is, well, it's the beginning of a... Uh, well, it's never really explained as the creepy part. The truly creepy thing about this game is that it does involve a lot of open-ended things, and while most of it can be simply dismissed as, oh, that's just something somebody left behind, that dirt bike obviously crashed recently since the wheels are still spinning. Well, one of the wheels is anyway. And later on, we come across a cell phone that's half buried in the desert, and it's still going, meaning that Odds are, it couldn't have been left more than a day or so ago. We don't ever get any follow-up as to what happened to those people who lost the cell phone and the dirt bike. In other words... In other words, this desert ate them, and we have no idea what ever happened to them. Strugs just sort of dismisses his aw, oh, tarantulas probably ate them already. Tarantulas can't kill people like that. But it really does serve to hammer the point home that this desert is mean and nasty, and it will not ever let up in trying to kill you. Except when the warrior beetles get stunned like that. Yes, the warrior beetles are the red ones, the scarabs are the yellow ones, and the toxic beetles, the gray ones, well, we'll see those later. This game does reward you for exploring around, however, with the grubs, as well as these guys. I'll, get, I'll come back for him later. Those are leaf crickets. The green leaf crickets... Oh yes, I unlocked a new concept art gallery. The green leaf crickets will... It, they'll regenerate your health the same as the normal gray, gray, brown crickets, but... In addition, they will also increase your maximum health if you eat enough of them. I think the number is three, and every three enemies... Every three leaf crickets you eat will increase your maximum health a little bit. Not a huge amount, but enough to notice and sometimes to matter. I think that your life bar will double by the end of the game if you collect all the leaf crickets, but I could be wrong. This is not going to be a game where I go out of my way to collect everything because it'll be about three times as long if I show every single hidden shortcut, every single little piece, and if I come across them while exploring, then sure, I'll show you exactly where they are, but... I'm more interested in getting this game done, and it's going to get kind of boring if I go into every single nook and cranny that this game has to offer. Ooga booga booga. Of course, you can climb on walls, being a tarantula and all, but you can't climb on ceilings. Not yet, anyway. That'll come later. Hmm. There's the grub. There was the grub. The more you explore, the more you can find it. Sometimes it's not leaf crickets and grubs and things like that. Sometimes it's just little pieces of decoration where the environment is just out there and you can explore for yourself. So you can check out the envi- Whoa boy, is that a bird on the power line? I think I better get off this log before the bird decides to eat me. <laughs> ah, wolf spiders. In real life, wolf spiders are called wolf spiders because they roam around and hunt to find prey, whereas most spiders are more ambush predators who are content to either... Oh, web shot. That's a stun weapon. You can go all Spider-Man on everybody and nail them with a web that'll slow them down, or actually stun them for a brief time. Although some enemies will, are able to, uh... Some enemies are able to block that attack. Wolf spiders are not among them. But in reality, wolf spiders are named for the fact that they roam around to hunt, as opposed to tarantulas or something like that that just sits in a burrow and waits for prey to come by, or uh, other warp weavers and web-spinning spiders that hunt for their prey by... Come on, I want to get past. Ow. By sitting in a web and waiting to wrap their prey up. Now, that's the first time I've run afoul of the Black Mist. The Black Mist is never explained in-game, but 
often you'll find yourself trapped in the midst of a place where you want to escape, where there's a lot of enemies, and the Black Mist will block you until you defeat all the enemies. Yeah. Ooh, leaf again. Nom, 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 nom. Well, that's one out of the 17 the Tarantula can get. I believe the Scorpion can get more... 20-something, I'm pretty sure. Ooh! Cricket, 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 lunch, 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 Aha! Itsy bitsy spider creeps upon you now. Wait a minute. What's that behind the itsy bitsy spider? It's the big scary scorpion! Yes, this is the scorpion we'll be playing as next part. Now, the adventure goals are basically ways of the game saying this is what the tarantula is doing now. It never explains why it's doing them or what uh, motive it might have for that, but there you go. The scorpion is sort of the end of the, uh, sort of the end game boss. Hmm, for now. Mm, yep. Get you. Back. Back, you vile fiend. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. The scorpion has faster attacks than the tarantula, but it doesn't have our web shot, and uh, that gives us a significant advantage. We're also faster than the scorpion, so we can just uh, get the heck out of there whenever we're in too much danger. Boogala boogala. Ow! Tripped me! And now he's just gonna go bye-bye. Well, who's stalking? Who is open to debate? 